Hi folks, Scott Kelby here from Kelby One, and we have an intermediate level tutorial. We're going to be converting this image to black and white, and we're going to be using the new black and white profiles and a whole bunch of other things. So just want to give you a heads up. We're going to be moving at intermediate speed, so we're going to assume that you kind of know your way around Lightroom, so let's get started. Here's our image taken over in Venice, Italy last week and when I was doing my workshop. It, it looks like kind of the eh image, and it, it's not awesome, which <laughs> is not one of my favorites, but um, I think we can get something out of this. So the first thing we'll do is let's go ahead and kind of fix what I see is the biggest problem, which is the sky. Now uh, I'm going to convert it to black and white. And, and by the way, before we get too far into this, when I, I see an image and I wonder if it'll make a good black and white, I just hit the letter V as in Victor on my keyboard to look and see if it would make a good black and white. It just kind of gives you a default looking black and white and you can say, yeah, okay, that looks good or not. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and re hit reset, but that's how I see if an image looks reasonable to, to make into a black and white. Now, let's go over here and let's choose our black and white first and then we'll fix the sky. So I could go and choose Adobe Monochrome and this is a new profile. It is a better profile than they've had before, and 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 if you choose Adobe Monochrome, it kind of gets gives you a a raw black and white. And when you do that, watch what happens. I'm going to show you something. So look right here. We're using Adobe Color. That's the new default profile, which is actually pretty good. But down here it says HSL and color right there. I'm going to go over here and switch to Monochrome, and watch what happens. The HSL and color switches to the black and white panel now. So we can go in here and tweak our black and white, but I don't do that yet. Instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to go here to the browser, these little four icons over here to the right, little, little rectangles. I'm going to click on that. We're going to scroll past monochrome, and we're going to go down here to the creative profiles. There's 17 different black and white creative profiles, and we can just move our cursor over them and watch. You, it gives you a preview of how it's going to look like. Well, all you got to do is find one that you like, and stop when you get to it. Well, oh, that looks pretty good right there. Ooh, black and white 09. I'm gonna click and apply that profile. So that is my profile, and I can just close this. Now we can start working on that, that sky. I'm gonna show you a trick that I've been teaching on my Lightroom seminar tour, and um, it is when you have this kind of situation. I know there's detail in that sky. I was there that day. It was a cloudy day, but in my photo, of course, uh, it's the the sensor is only going to capture the foreground, not the sky. So I'm going to bring it back with this trick that I show in the seminar, which is to lower the exposure a bunch until the sky looks good. All right, so that's step one. So the sky looks good, but the rest of the photo is a mess. But we've conquered the biggest problem in here. Now we can go and I'm going to lower the highlights a little, which will also bring back some of the sky. Then I'm going to go to the shadows and open them all the way up. It's not enough, but it's a start. I'm going to crank up the whites a little bit. I don't want to do it so much I bring back the sky. I'm going to darken, I'm going to increase the contrast a bunch. And to bring out the detail and the shininess of the water, I'm going to increase the clarity. So we're already looking pretty good. Also, I want to give you a little secret. The dehaze slider, which is designed to get rid of the haze, is another form of contrast, and it works pretty awesome for black and white images. Look at that. So cranking up the dehaze on a black and white image, you usually can't crank it this much on like a, a color image, but you can really crank it on a black and white. And look, we're, look where we're at. Now, there is an issue here that was actually in the original photograph, but we're gonna have to fix it in post, which is the top half of this building is kind of dark. So we're gonna go and get the adjustment brush tool. We're gonna use a, let's double click on effect to zero all the sliders out and make a little bit, maybe uh, 0.62, I'm just grabbing a random number, a small brush, and I'm just going to paint over the top of this building so it doesn't look, there we go. I don't want it to look like we, we messed it up. All right, and that's a little too bright. Let's pull it back a little. I want it to blend in with the rest of the building, so something like that. So that's not so bad, and we could probably bring back the little bell tower here if we wanted to. Let's do a little bit in there. All right, that kind of gets us going. Now, the last area that really needs some work is this kind of area right here in the boat. So let's hit new. That way we keep what we did and we add something new. So I'm going to increase the amount of exposure. 
I'm going to make my brush bigger by hitting the right bracket key on my keyboard. And I'm going to just kind of paint over to brighten this area of the boat here. Now, if you spill outside the edges, hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and you can just get rid of that little spill there like you just saw me do that was kind of spillage. This is too bright and I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and then we're going to go back and lower the amount of brightness because I don't know if I want to brighten the boats quite this much. Getting a little carried away here with the brightness. But maybe down in here too. There we go. And I spilled over a little bit right there. And of course I could use auto mask to help with that but I didn't turn it on so. All right, we're getting kind of close here with the whole image, and I, I want to give you an idea of, of where we're at. So let's let's just uh, switch back here. I'm going to go to a before and after. Now, when I go to a before and after, it's going to show me the before and after from my color image. All right, so let's go like that. You see, it's it's the color image. So let's go over here to the history panel. And at the very beginning, remember I did that quick conversion to black and white? I can ask for that to be the before image. Right click on it and choose copy history step settings to before. And now it shows you the before. So what you're seeing is the standard black and white versus what we've been able to do over here, which is quite a bit more. Now you can keep them both on screen at the same time if you want. And you can say, well, this needs to be maybe a little brighter. And another thing that you might do, I got a couple of things we can do. First off, let's go back to just the regular view. This thing has a little bit of lens distortion. Now, when I go to the lens corrections panel and I apply a profile just by turning on enable profile corrections, it's going to brighten the whole image because there's a lot of lens vignetting in the edges. So watch. Woo, that brightened it up quite a bit. So we might want to go back to the effects panel Go to uh, the uh, post-crop vignetting and just bring a little bit of that back so it's not so much a lens problem as an effect that we add a little later. That looks better. And then I think we're going to go to the transform panel here and we're going to move the horizontal. I wasn't standing in exactly. I'm standing on a, when I took this on a, on a, on a bus platform, like a water bus where you wait for the water bus. So it wasn't perfect. And then let's move the vertical. Let's get the buildings a little straighter, maybe right there-ish. Give it a second to draw, because I've done a lot to it. So there we go. I think that's looking better. We're going to have to crop the image a little bit, because obviously we're missing some spots over here. So let's maybe go grab this. Let's go back to the crop tool. And see if we can fix this a little bit. There we go. I don't want to get too close to the edge there. All right, that's better. And I think we're in we're in pretty good shape. The last thing that you might do is something that you see done a lot, which is to get the adjustment brush and we're going to add little specks of light. So we are at about a stop, a little more than a stop. I'm going to get a nice big brush and we're just going to click once in highlight areas. To kind of now it's it's going to look too much when I first do it. We're going to back it off. Don't worry. But we're going to go to areas where we kind of want to make it look like there's a little bit of like interesting light falling on our photo, and we'll stick it in different places in the image. Usually I try to like choose highlight places, but sometimes I also choose random places just to make it kind of interesting. And let's see where else. Maybe one over here. And it's a little bright right now, but you see a lot of people doing this. It's a very popular look and then let's back those off to where it's not so obvious there you just want a hint of it so maybe less than a half a stop and then we'll can we'll compare that to the original black and white and you can kind of see where we are and how we were able to bring back the clouds and do some of that stuff. And it, it still needs a little bit more work, maybe a little bit more brightening and things. But that kind of gets us in the ballpark for a black and white conversion using the new profiles in Lightroom. Well, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Hey, if you uh, want to learn more Lightroom stuff, there's two places to go. Uh, I write a free, free blog over at LightroomKillerTips.com. But if you really want to learn Lightroom from the ground up, go to Kelby1.com where we've got tons of full-length classes on every topic you can imagine. I think we have 51 or 52 full-length classes on Lightroom. It's, 
It's a lot of Lightroom training. And uh, we also publish Lightroom Magazine 10 times a year. So it's a whole magazine dedicated to teaching you Lightroom. And that's uh, free when you become a Kelby One member. It's If you're a Kelby One Pro member, you get Photoshop User Magazine and Lightroom Magazine and access to hundreds and hundreds of tutorials, thousands of lessons. You'll love it. You'll super, super love it. You'll go crazy. Go look at it. It's over at kelbyone.com. You can start learning today. Well, thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this little look into our world of black and white and the new profiles in Lightroom 7.3-ish.